I always want to be, this is the picture that always comes to my mind because this is my understanding of faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You can do whatever you like, but Hebrews 11.6 says, without faith, whatever else you may do, it is impossible to please God. And faith is not intellectually believing that the facts of the Bible. The devil also believes that. He doesn't have faith. That is knowledge. Faith is a helpless dependence upon God. Like a branch is helplessly dependent upon a tree and the sap from the tree flows into the branch and keeps on producing fruit. And even if that branch has been there for 50 years, the branch says, I can do nothing without you, to the tree. If you have understood that, you have understood faith. And your life will always be triumphant, I'll tell you that. Faith is the victory. In 1 John 5 we read, this is the, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. What is that? Our helpless dependence upon God. When a branch is like that, it will always produce fruit, even after a hundred years. When preachers start their ministry with great power, and then over a period of time they decline, it is because they have stopped depending on the Lord. They are starting depending on their past experience and their cleverness and the fact that people in their church respect them, that even if they speak a lot of nonsense, they can still continue to be elders. Such people are an absolute disgrace to the name of Jesus Christ and I pray that there will not even be one elder like that in a CFC church. We want every elder to be helplessly dependent upon God throughout his life. Then they can be an example to all the other brothers and sisters to be helplessly dependent upon God. God doesn't care for your intelligence and your ability and your knowledge, not even your Bible knowledge. He doesn't help. The people with the maximum Bible knowledge were the ones who crucified Jesus Christ. Never forget that. A man who was completely ignorant of the Bible, Pilate, <laughs> wanted to release Jesus. But the people with Bible knowledge said, no, kill him. Never forget that. Bible knowledge can make you blind if you are not humble. If you are not keeping your conscience clear. So it's very important. Now these are truths that we have preached for 43 years in CFC. And we will never stop preaching it. We never get tired of preaching it. Because of two reasons. The ones who have been here need to be reminded of it every day. Even if they have been here 43 years. And the new ones who are coming to the church who have never heard this in other churches need to hear it here. And the little children who are growing up who have not heard it because now only they are coming to an age of understanding, they need to hear it. That's why these truths that I'm sharing need to be repeated again and again and again and again. And I will never get tired of hearing it. Paul sa uh, Peter says in 2 Peter, I want you to see that verse, 2 Peter chapter 1. A good verse for all those who preach God's word. 2 Peter chapter 1, it says here, verse 12. 2 Peter 1, verse 12. Therefore, I will always be ready. Now, this is an old Peter saying, who's probably over 60, doesn't know how much longer he'll live. I will always be ready to remind you of these things even though you already know them, and even though you've been established in the truth which is present in you. So here is Peter speaking to a congregation who already knows certain truths, and who's already established in those truths, 
And Peter preaches the same message. And some person who does not know the ways of God goes to Peter and says, Hey, Peter, you preached that same message 20 years ago. And Peter says, Yeah, I'm preaching it again. You preached it last year. Yeah, I'm preaching it again. I'm not seeking a reputation, Peter says, to be preaching something new. You know, a lot of preachers, they, I know preachers who keep a diary of, this is what I preached in so-and-so place, this is what I preached in so-and-so place, so I can't preach that same sermon again. These are people who don't know God. I never kept such a diary. I don't mind preaching the same message 25 times in the same place to the same people. Because I've discovered one thing, that people don't understand it, even after one hearing or ten hearings sometimes. So he says, I will always be ready to remind you of these things, even though you already know them, and you're established in the truth which is presented to you, and not only that, I consider it right, verse 13, as long as I am alive, to stir you by way of reminder. In other words, I'm not going to preach it to you in some dead way, I'm going to preach it in a way that you'll be stirred as you are reminded of these things. That's the way to preach God's word. Because as I know that the Lord has shown me, verse 14, that I have to lay aside my earthly body soon and I'm going to go to be with the Lord. But I will be diligent that even after my departure, verse 15, you will still remember what I told you because... I'm writing it down. And if Peter were living today, he would say, because I've recorded these hundreds of my messages on video, and you'll be reminded of it long after I'm gone. That is a true servant of God. So people who want to hear something new, it says in the people in Athens in Acts 17, Towards the end of that chapter, it says, Paul went to Athens. They always wanted to hear something new. And those who want to hear something new, there are many other churches where pe pe preachers preach clever messages. You can go there. But here we are going to preach what is old. You know, there's a verse in Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah's chapter 6. Jeremiah was a prophet who was trying to save God's people from going to Babylon. Israel was so backslidden that God is going to punish them by sending them to Babylon. But before he sent them to Babylon, he sent Jeremiah the prophet to preach to them for 40 years to try and save them. But he did not succeed. He wept. He was called the weeping prophet. He would weep in secret, not in the presence of people. He said, if you don't listen to me, I'll weep for you in secret. But he did not succeed. They went to Babylon. But one of the things he said in Jeremiah 6 was, thus says the Lord, verse 16. Jeremiah 6, verse 16. Thus says the Lord, stand by the ways. By the ways means there are many roads going in different ways. It's a junction with many roads going in different directions. Stand there and look for the ancient paths. The paths that the apostles taught. The paths written in scripture by the apostles. The example set by Jesus and the apostles. And ask where is the good way? Out of all these different, ten different ways, which is the good way? And walk in it. And if you walk in that way, the proof will be, you will find rest for your souls. You will not be in unrest. You will not be in anxiety. You will not be in fear. Those are all indications that you are not walking the way of the Lord. The way of the Lord, there's always rest for your soul. I have found that way. I'm not ashamed to say it. I only say the Lord helped me to find it and he keeps me there. 
I don't say I keep myself there, I say the Lord keeps me from stumbling. And the Lord keeps me from looking for some new path. I don't want a new path. The same old path is good for me. In, there's a song that the, in the olden days, hundreds of years ago, the African slaves in America, southern United States would sing, give me the old time religion. Give me the old time religion. That's good enough for me. And that's what I say. Give me that Christianity that the apostles preached. That's good enough for me. I don't want these modern versions that have not helped people to come closer to God. And it's the modern versions that are leading our young, many young people astray. Many people are drawn to that. We, stand, we stood against it 43 years ago. We stand against it today. Look for the ancient paths.